Hi there, everyone. Um, you've uh, some of you will have seen this before. I think we'll start with this uh, table that I made, which is a, a work table. The lid bolts down, so it's a normal table when it's not. When I'm doing things like this, I get an idea from seeing a, a painting, and uh, I found this one, and I thought I've got to have a go at this. People are going to want to want to have a see this. So, so. I take that and that's all I've got to go on. So I guess the size, you know, and I, I figured it's got to be quite deep. So I've made it a, a big thing. I'll try to make it as, as near as I can to the original. So uh, it's, it's quite a big, it's sort of um, 30 inches deep by about three foot long. Um, this lid then comes down and uh, so you can have a normal tabletop on it as well. But uh, the whole thing collapses down, but the, this on this model, the top is quite a heavy thing. Uh, and a lot of the time on something like this goes into making all the actual drawers, which have all had to be individually made. In. And uh, Leslie has made the uh, draw pulls, copper draw pulls. So, uh, so I mean, but this setup here is what takes a lot of time. Um, so, and that's what's made this one so expensive. And I was selling this one at 1200 and I've reduced it to a thousand and that's uh, available at the moment with free delivery. Um, so fine, you can have this one very one, but uh, if you'll find this one a little bit big, I am planning, I decided to do a somewhat smaller version. And I drew up some plans the other day. So I thought at about, um, 30 inches long, something like not as big as that. I wrote it down, that's what I was going to do. I about 22 by 32, um, and I've based it on a different table, which is this one here. Which I've also done copies of that as well as a normal table. There's one on the uh, website at the minute, although that's to order because that one's sold. And I thought maybe just a few drawers. Uh, and the ridge around the bit around the edge and the hinge lid again so it's it's a lot more um it's a lot easier to cart around with you if you're going to use it for uh, for reenactment purposes and I, I reckon that's going to come in somewhere around about 500 to 600 something like that so uh, watch this space as soon as i've got one i shall let you all know i shall put it on the website so uh, um well We'll move on from that and uh, I'll show you a bit about these um, sort of folding um, chairs and stools we do. I've got one here. The, this one I, I based on a couple of different pitch, uh, uh, paintings and um, I was trying to decide the most practical way of doing it. Um, this one gives quite, they both give quite good detail about the back. This one looks like it's curved. I don't think it could have been. That wouldn't work. It wouldn't fold up properly. But I quite like the little hook out. But I, I figured that was too sharp. So I've made that a bit more gentle. And I've taken more of the design from this. But they're both fairly similar. And both are similar period. This one's a bit earlier than that one, I think. But it's they're mostly sort of 15th or 16th century. And uh, how I make these, they're all Morton tenon jointed. So all these parts are very solid. Um, and these dowels here, uh, these, I always, I used to do those in wood and I often found them breaking. So we're, we've now moved over, these are all solid steel and uh, these are riveted over a washer. So these aren't going anywhere. Um, on this one, you have to, um, you have a bit of extra work to do with the, um, turn knob here to, to make that look like the original. So the original probably would have had wooden wooden dowels through, but I find them unreliable. So let's make them safe and decent. And that folds up like that, you see. So that makes quite a, a compact chair. And um, here's another one that's a chair. This, um, the, the, this same principle of folding works for whichever way you do it. This one's facing back to front instead of side to side. This uh, chair are based on about three or four different ones. A lot of the surviving ones of these seem to be quite elaborate and um, 
it, it does make it difficult to make something that people can afford to buy. Um, uh, often some of them, they have a straight back as well, and that makes a very odd sitting position. So I, uh, I've come up with a compromise between sort of several different ones. Some of them have lots and lots and lots of parts to them. I've done a simpler part list so that they come down a bit smaller and I've given it a bit of a curve to the back so that it makes a comfortable sitting position and those fold up pretty nicely too and these steel dowels again as before um, there's uh, one last one which I'll just bring in I'll just bring it over there That's more and this one is probably the heaviest one that we do but this one I have seen the <coughs> exact same one on probably six, seven different <coughs> paintings, all from the 14th and 15th century, mostly some a bit later, but they're all exactly like this. And this is the one I can be sure is the most accurate and <coughs> a relatively common piece of furniture. But this one, but this is quite heavy. They are pretty simple. These are these are lighter, and of course they've got a back. So you place your money, you take your choice. Can you give us a price on this? Yes, yes. These are one seven five. These are one seven five as well. These are a bit more work than that, even though there's fewer parts. And uh, these are one six five. And the ones in these, I've, uh, these I've got. These are in chestnut. The other, these two are in oak. I've only got one of each of these at the minute, and I've got a few of those. And they're all on, <coughs> oh, excuse me, on um, barnacle, the barnacle tree dot co dot uk. Yeah, or if you go which on, is our if you're just site. looking for history in the making, go on our shop and it'll take you there. Um, so we only have one selling site, it's <coughs> easier that way. Um, the bed. Oh, yes. This um, shows you how these uh, Morrison tenon joints work, probably once you know the basics, but uh, you cut away. <laughs> You have a, 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 a tongue and a groove, basically the mortise and the tenon. And most of these joints that I use on my furniture are done like this. So you've got to, they'll slot in like that and then they'll be pegged. This being a bed, this is made to come apart rather than being permanently pegged. But you can see how easily that goes together and that makes a very solid joint. And these can be dismantled really easily yeah. so that you can take it away for a weekend, um, put it in your tent, and then cart it home again. Yeah, you just need a, a metal pin that I supply with the bed so that you can knock those right through. And uh, this, this bed's for sale, I can't remember how much I put it up for, but uh, this no, is a, a, a one that we used to have in the house, but we've... Uh, we've not got the space for it right now. We've not got the space for that as well. <laughs> So, but we, we do um, full tester beds with, yeah, tester um, beds with solid roofs, um, posters. all sorts of different types of beds, and they're all constructed in the same way. So if you've got a difficult house, then they will come to you in pieces, yeah, they can and we will build it on site. And we just put it together on site. It's, uh, most of these things, they don't have a lot of glue in. It's not needed. We've done spiral staircases before, but please warn us if you've got one. <laughs> <laughs> um, Are you going to do a bit of demo? Yeah, I'll do a bit of, of demo now. So um, we've, um, I've just set up a couple of things to show you. Um, a bit of carving here. I've just set up a very basic fluting pattern. This is one I do quite often. So I've just set up the repeats. I've done one one here and that can be done with just a few chisels so we start with the flute there. that wants to turn your sound down possibly <laughs> Oh, 
All our carving is done like this. It's all yeah, I don't think we need. We don't use rounders. Well, I, not for this. <laughs> um. If machinery is ever used for anything, it's to speed up a process so that we can get to this point. to the end of that cut and then you can get a neat end on them. That's not quite there but that's a good idea. That's the... And then there's a little spot in the top, just tap the bulk out with the V gouge and then just finish off this chip with chisel in practice you tend to do more than one section at a time and you'll work on I'll do I'll do this cut on a whole of them in a row so I'll go like that and then like that because then you don't have to keep doing awkward mass production yeah <laughs> awkward angles because that isn't a great way of going I'd normally turn the work around though. So now, that, that gives you an idea. The other thing is some of our work is sanded um, to make it a sensible price for most people. And this piece you probably can't see on here. Um, that's been sanded, it's quite matte. Um, it's, very flat. It's, it's a very flat finish, um, but it's cheap. Uh, it's also, if I'm doing the um, production stuff, like yeah. the stools and chairs, it's impractical to do those hand planes. Um, I mean, you can get a finer finish than that, but the, the difference is you get a, a much more authentic finish with a hand plane finish. And, if you just and we do that, use that for a lot of our bigger pieces, yeah. such as the, um, the cupboard here. Um, that normally is all hand planed and it's got a slightly uneven texture to it but it's still quite smooth um, and see that that has come straight off the machine that is just a machine plane finish you can see little ridges in it you may or may not be able to see, yeah, those, but, able to see those um then i use depending on the what i'm doing if it's for indoor furniture I tend to use a metal plane because they're easier to set up and easier to keep accurate. And the planer knife isn't straight across, we just take the corners off so that it's slightly curved and that, that stops you getting ridges in your cuts, in your surface. So I've set this up so that the grain's facing the right direction, it's pointing upwards away from me. And then I can finish that off. You, you get often little bits of breakout, but if you look on original pieces of furniture, they've all got that as well. So uh, you probably won't be able to tell the difference between this and sanded stuff on the Not camera. Not visually here, on the camera. It does give a different finish, and it is worth it when you're doing uh, bigger pieces. You get odd little bits, like you'll get here you've got where the knife's judded a bit and here where there's a little bit of breakout where the jet grain changes direction and so long as it's not really torn it that's fine it but if it does you, you turn it around work backwards and take it away and if it's really really awkward stuff and it's not finishing nicely you just go across and the finish isn't quite as good but it does get it nice and smooth and then when if we're doing if you're roughing stuff out a bit more or you want to make sure that you don't get lots of black marks because whilst this hasn't marked now you, you often get lots of black marks which is the reaction between the tannic acid in the wood and the steel and you get iron tannate it makes a lot of black marks and the odd one on a bit of furniture you can scrape off 
and um, but uh, if you use a wooden plane you don't get any of that but these are harder to set up and uh, if you're doing it a lot of it then it, it's a bit of a pain but uh, they did just as good a job Uh, and very quickly, do you want to show the oh yeah. moulding plane and then we'll finish up with what we've got in stock? Yeah, with, um, when, um, when we want mouldings for some authentic pieces, there's a couple of ways of doing it. Sometimes they're just a chamfer and that's just done with a plane. Um, often you want something a bit more and uh, I do use these traditional moulding planes so you can see it's got a profile and a profile knife and you just it's just a lot of work <laughs> you have to go down each piece plane it down put it square to a moulding and you end up having to fish all the bits out of the plane all the time sometimes some get stuck then you've got to take the knife out and reset it. <laughs> and this is what we use for edges of cupboards and things like that, and um, edges of panelling for certain things. Um, so when you see mouldings like that, it is all hand on. Yeah. So I mean, often that uh, you can you can cut that moulding off, and you can mitre it and you put it still... uh, to dress around it. Uh, the edge of um, some panelling, but mostly for early stuff that is grown onto the panel uh, to the styles and rails, so that is part of styles and rails. So you have to do a true mitre, so your other rail going in here. It, it, there are a lot more fiddly to do, <laughs> right? Without being able to show you, so that's a bit of our yeah. process, and so. A quick bit of stock now. Yeah. So we've got lots of these little boxes. Um, yeah, it's a, small, a very small oak chest. That's about 90 quid. Uh, we've got this, uh, oh, this settle in here. I've we'll brought this in to bit. clean up. This is the one that we tend way. to have with us this on display. Um, so obviously, the last place we went with it, um, it was a bit of a muddy field. Yes. Often. So that needs cleaning up. It's cleaning up a bit. These but ones. Are... We have got that on offer on yeah. the online shop, which is. But it's not on the shop. On... Is, is it not? Next, right. Next it needs cleaning. But it will this, be on the shop. This will be 500 quid and normally about six, six fifty. But we can size. do them to order, to order any size. size um, on to. Back onto the cupboard. Yeah, another one that cut is so coming So you can see the hand planed edging in the centre there. The, yeah, these mouldings are, are done with moulding planes. Um, these uh, flu, these um, fretwork, you do, I do this on a, a lot of Ormbury's cupboards from the uh, 15th, 16th century. Um, and they have fabric on to stop, because um, a lot of these are meat safes food cupboards and that allows a bit of airflow without um, letting flies in. So we uh, tend to use on these nice cupboards a bit of pretty bright coloured wool. They're your favourite thing on yeah, like doing cupboards. These. But they, these, I mean, you've just got to mark it out, cut them away with the drill press and the jigsaw and then a whip round with the router. But then this last cut, I finish it off by hand. So all the what you see has been cut by hand. Uh, I'm just taking the waste away with the router. And again, we can do any size, style to order. Um, but this one is how much? Um, I, this one was seven, but this one, when I've tied it up a bit, I'll do that for five. I want to make a new, right. new stuff for the store again. Um, and now over to uh, the rest of the big chests. We've got so this we have one. the little. Oh, we're going to this one. Okay. Yeah, we'll start there. This yep. um, has wooden pin hinge. Uh, these are quite an early uh, chest. You see a lot of these in the 13th century, particularly. Um, but you still see this sort of form of construction going right into the 16th. And that one's century. how much? This one is 
285 and that's on the side so you can so this is hand plain chestnut and the little um, oak one that's in brown oak that's more of a 16th century stroke 17th century style just a bit of simple chip carving on the edges there and a bit of a molding put on um, molded plain um, edging on there and that's how much uh, that is uh, yeah, 180. 180. <laughs> and, and then um, this, um, this one, little settle. Um, oh, 275. And this is in chestnut again. Uh, and that has the flip top. Good dual purpose back. furniture. And this comes from this painting here, which, so you can see what sort of thing it is. Where I get my leads from. <laughs> right, and. Uh, smaller stuff. Onto we've smaller got stuff. We've got lots of boxes again. Trenches, um, two sizes I've got in stock. These are small ones in chestnut and larger ones in ash. Um, these, uh, in yeah, well, I've, I've included postage in the cost of these on the site. So these are 11 and 18. And I think these are, these hooks are. 1250 hand forged heart thingies and these sconces. We've got a few of these uh, 18 quid. This is a nice bit of um, spalt, sort of pippy oak. Uh, they've all got those. I did a few of those with that same finish. Um, smaller boxes. We've got that one, this in chestnut. That is. <laughs> Even, that's going to be 45 that's the smaller one these little oak ones are 40. all these hinges these um, are machine made ones i buy in but then i um, beat them up on the anvil and chuck them in the fire and uh and that to give them that to hand this hand, them. handmade uh, look about them and i think they can come out pretty well so um, they're 40 the little ones yeah and these um these the nails i put the hinges on these uh rose head nails um, and the other two that one just one large medium chest one that's 65 that one in oak is 70. um and then we've got the candle oh some candle holders so i can't i'm without looking they are the on they are on the website. These are on the website. Um, They're all priced these individually. So um, they start, I think they're from about twelve fifty to I think twenty-five for that big three piece one. So they're, they're all in that range. Um so we about done? we've got at the minute. 